Okay, it's too much silence, I'll start. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go through a few charts. Uh, it'll be semi-structured uh, presentation. Uh, I'm only going to go through a subset of the charts that I have for the presentation I put together for a group of F3J pilots. The, the, the aspects that are of interest to global error modeling is uh, the building basics for how do you read error? So uh, I'll start with talking about uh, uh, what what is the playground that we work in, uh, meteorology. Yeah. You know, we're working in this part of the air, and uh, this is what we're flying in, and trying to understand uh, some of the the basics uh, of the physics, so you can understand why uh, <clears throat> why thermals do what they do, why the air is doing what it does, so you can understand. Uh, uh, a bit more about the, the whys of the, uh, uh, figuring out where the thermals are or alternately figuring out where the sink is to avoid it. <coughs> the, uh, so I'm not going to have to get up and do that. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. So, actually, uh, it's, yeah, so I'm just going to talk about meteorology and air reading, and the rest of it we'll just do free form if anybody's still awake. <laughs> yeah, the work. Huh? yeah, I should have brought it that. Uh, yeah, so, the first big section is meteorology. <clears throat> What's going on in the atmosphere? <clears throat> and the obvious thing. No. What's powering, powering us? You know, for us uh, guys that are. Uh, Flying pure sail planes. Uh, the only thing that's powering us is the, is the sun. And uh, understanding that, yeah, I'll be going through a lot of this. You need to understand uh, what's limiting uh, our universe, uh, you know, which is typically a temperature inversion, and I'll go through a lot. And so, you know, what's inverted below that is the mixing layer. And, you know, the typical cycle during the day because the rules change during the day and it's always good to understand when the rules are changing so you understand what's going on so yeah talking about inland versus coastal you got continental climate you got island climates there's, there's a lot of different styles of uh, uh, air so and the rules change for each style also just changes during the day. <clears throat> and how does how does the wind influence thermal generation and formation and you know, the, the effects of how do you change your flying style to uh, optimize the, the, the lift available? Uh, and blah blah blah. Tick next button. Just touch the playground. Yeah. Push the button. <clears throat> yeah. So this is uh, the uh, uh, a plot of you know, the ground, you know, altitude, and then temperature. So near the ground is hottest, and as you go up with the altitude, the, the air, as, as it goes up, reduces pressure, the air expands, cools down. So typical routine is you get the, a temperature profile, and then at some altitude, uh, the temperature profile stops reducing with altitude, uh, jumps up, and that's called uh, the inversion. So it's a temperature inversion. You can see it when you, you know, if you've flown in and out of Tel Aviv, you can see near the ground as you're taking off, the air is kind of uh, hazy and so on, and all of a sudden you pop through this layer and the air is nice and clear above it. That's, that's, the, that's the temperature inversion. There's not much mixing between the two because uh, <clears throat> the air above that layer is uh, much is warmer. So that uh, it, it's a, important to understand how high <clears throat> the temperature inversion is because there's a correlation between the height of the uh, mixing layer and the thermal size and thermal spacing. And also, typically in the morning. Well, we'll go through uh, the, 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 uh, what, how it changes during the day. And also of importance is what is that temperature profile? 
because uh, that defines how stable the air is or unstable the air is. The lapse rate is what they call it, the temperature with respect to altitude. <clears throat> and so some days the air is really stable and that's because the air is cooling off more slowly with altitude. So you, you warm up the air near the ground and it starts rising and it runs into, well, when the air is rising, it uh, cools off at what they call the adiabatic lapse rate. You know, the air rises, it expands a little bit, it cools down. And if the air above it is, you know, it'll be cooler, but when it rises and it expands, it might actually end up being cooler than the air above when it stops rising. So if the air, if this slope is uh, a little bit more uh, steep, in other words, it drops with less temperature or it loses less temperature with altitude than this, what I call the adiabatic lapse rate, then the thermals are weak and diffuse and don't go very high and they kind of break up. So it's important to understand lapse rate for the technical details, or you just go out there and fly and you can feel uh, you know, this stays a little more weak. Yeah. <coughs> There's uh, <coughs> different uh, uh, things are different from early morning to midday to some, uh, <coughs> late evening. Yeah. Trying to speed it up. So in the early morning, you know, it's typically it cools off near the ground, and so. Overnight, you know, the ground cools off, and you get this layer near the ground where it's uh, uh, <clears throat> so you get a morning inversion. When you, you can see it with the smoke going up, like this picture, so there's a morning inversion that's actually quite low. So it's coolest near the ground and it warms up. So early in the morning, perfect stability. No sunrise, there's no thermals. The air's stable. And it's good trimming weather. Then uh, the sun hits the ground and you start warming up the ground. And <coughs> so as, as the ground starts warming up and the air moves over, it, you start getting the initial low level uh, mixing layer. And so you get little thermals that go up only to this low level altitude. And so you get little thermals, lots of little thermals all over. The life cycle of those thermals is typically quite short. So you get, a, you know, the thermal goes from Early, that uh, just starts a little bubble and goes, and nice teenager, vigorous thermal only goes up to maybe 60 meters, and then uh, the thermal gets to middle old age and dies. Only the thermal cycle might be only five minutes, 10, 10 minutes. So when you're working, you know, the 8 a.m. style thermals, you work one, it dies, move on to the next one, and so on. <coughs> and then that, uh, as the <coughs> day starts warming up, the the thermals get higher, they start spreading out, and then at some point the, the uh, <coughs> ground temperature gets warm enough to where this low level morning inversion breaks out. And then, there you go. And at that point where the morning, the, the low level inversion breaks, rules change because now it's not little thermals scattered about, all of a sudden, bam, once it breaks through that morning inversion, you get the big thermals far apart. <coughs> and uh, the full scale sorting guys call that the, when they, they can take a plot and when they, they extrapolate the uh, temperature profile down to the ground, when the ground air, ground air temperature gets to a certain point, they call it the trigger temperature. And that's when all of a sudden they get the real thermals that the full scale sail points want to play with. And so and the, you can see it every morning when you go out and go fly. In the morning, you got the little thermals. Life's easy. It's you know, perfectly suited for model airplanes because you have several thermals within reach on the field. And then as it gets to late morning, noon time, all of a sudden, bam, things change. And then you get the big thermals much more widely scattered and it becomes much more challenging because the field might be all sink and the next thermal might be three miles away or the next real thermal. You get little bitty things, but they go up and they, they fight through the overall big sink and it's difficult to stay up when you're <clears throat> outside of the big lift cycle. And then <clears throat> later on in the day, late afternoon, the sun's beginning to 
drop down what did you get to where it's beginning to cool down near the ground and you get big diffuse thermals the air has been quite organized all day so big thermal cycles but they're beginning to lose energy and the lift actually near the near the ground starts dying off even though uh, at, at higher altitudes the thermals are still quite good so <clears throat> as the as it gets the late afternoon don't get low <laughs> and then in the evening conditions you'll you'll find that uh, the air has actually become quite stable close to the ground but you still have thermals at altitude and uh, <clears throat> so you, you, know, it, you can feel that the air is pretty stable near the ground there's not much air movement not much air mixing but at altitude you still got these big gentle thermals still doing the thing. <clears throat> 